Hello and welcome to the 40th ever episode of Punch <laughs> Card <laughs> Investing. <laughs> this, this is the episode on a very specific <laughs> company, Meta Platforms, rebranded <laughs> by this man here, the one and only <laughs> lizard person, not robot, smoke and meat CEO, Mark Zuckerberg. And we're going to try to answer this question, is... Facebook or Meta Platforms in Value Town. Is it a value stock? Is it still a growth stock? Is it not growth? Is it a shrinking stock? What is it? We're going to try to figure out what this whole thing is and whether we should add it to the punch card investing portfolio. So with that said, this is one of the greatest pictures of all time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hi, guys. Um, I'm crying. I'm crying. Oh man, he's, what a, he's in the background as well. We just want to make sure everyone, uh, everyone got to soak that in a bit. Um, yeah, it's not well, soaking in, man. It's not staying on the surface. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> slathering. Yeah, it's just sl <laughs> slathering. <laughs> uh, oh man, I'm already in a great mood. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot of news with Facebook. This whole like earnings drama, now everyone hates them. We, we talked about them a lot last week. Um, I know Jason laid into them for a while with uh, 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 last week's episode um, when he was kind enough, kind enough to join us. He, he, he was not bullish on Facebook as a business at this price where it sounds like it pretty much, uh, not for not unless it got much, much, much cheaper from even from here. And it's already dropped quite a bit. We're looking at... Um, what they're at about a six six hundred billion dollar market cap after being up near like eight fifty just a few weeks ago, so a significant pullback. And now that now we have to answer the question: Is this thing a value stock? Is it worth adding to our portfolio? So we'll have a vote towards the end. So stay tuned for that. And you guys remember how the punch card portfolio works? It's in the description below. We always include a link to our share site link. By the way, if you sign up, you get some free months uh, if you sign up for an annual plan. That helps the channel out as well. Um, but if we decide that we want to add Facebook to the portfolio, which we may or may not do. We'll see. And if we decide that, then you guys get to do a vote on our community tab uh, to figure out which holding would get removed from the five that we do have. Um, so that'll that'll be pretty fun um, if this does happen. I, 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 this will be an interesting vote because, um, uh, yeah, without spoiling anything because I don't actually know what's going to happen. Um, so... I don't know where to start, guys. Should we look at the stock chart instead of Mark's face? Well, has <laughs> has has anyone here owned Facebook before or currently owns Facebook? I have a AKA small. Meta. I have a small position, um, as I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's uh, probably one percent of the portfolio, and I've had it for a while. And I added, I actually added a little bit to it um, to incentivize myself to pay attention to it more now that it's getting a lot closer to where I would want to buy, um, at least knowing what I currently know. I, I still want to do a little bit more digging on kind of future growth prospects, but I do own some Facebook. I respect that, Jack. You really make a company earn their way into your portfolio, it seems. Uh, start, I, small, I, I, start at 1%. Got to yeah, build up. right, right. It's it's a spectrum. It's kind of a, I, I know some people like, for example, Jason, um, after dinner investor, he likes to advocate for that, that, uh, like, what not that the Brad Bar rule, or, or you'd want it to be um, twenty percent of your portfolio if you before you start buying? Um, and I see the value to that, but in my case, because I'm trying to stay fully invested, I'm constantly adding new cash to the portfolio. I I, I have a lower bar for adding a, a company to the portfolio than I might if I had kind of a more mature sort of not having a bunch of cash coming through the door relative to the portfolio size. I might be a little bit more. Um, stingy in that sense but not not the moment <laughs> yeah as, as ben says the one percent jack bar rule yeah it's probably pretty accurate the jack bar well one thing i'll point out i noticed today seth Klarman's 13f came in and uh this is for the fourth quarter so uh bow post had trimmed more than a third of their facebook position and i don't know if that was you know, the whole meta rebrand thing, you know, that kind of spooked him or if, you know, there were, there were other reasons. Um, obviously Klarman, one of the greatest investors of our time. So that was, that was noteworthy to me. There's, I'm surprised we haven't seen more big swings into it actually. Um, 
given the news. There's a lot of super investors have owned Facebook already. Um, haven't seen any news that there have been huge ads in general, though, um, even with the big drop off. And I wonder if people are nervous given some of the guidance they've given um, and the fact that they actually lost users for the first time in this last quarter, uh, which which was potentially a pretty big surprise. Well, it seems like it was a big surprise to a lot of investors. Well, it seems clear that the story is changing with Facebook, mm -hmm. right? I mean, their whole ad platform is kind of being shaken up by the new iOS rules. And it seems like they're really pivoting to, to the whole Web3 right metaverse thing. And that's who knows what they're going to be worth five to 10 years from now um, based on that. That's There's a lot of uncertainty. And obviously, markets do not like uncertainty. That's my perspective anyway. And adding to that uncertainty, we saw that Peter Thiel left the board. Granted, right. Mark kind of runs the show because he, he has like the majority of the voting shares. So it's in that way, it's, it's a strange because of how big the company is. It's almost like a one person show for major strategic decisions. And that's for better or for worse, uh, the metaverse being an obvious um, a point of contention. Uh, but you see Peter Thiel stepping down. I don't know if that's because of the direction the company's going in. If he wants to focus on something else, I don't really know. Um, but could be not a great signal. Uh, Zuckerbot, any take from you? I think I did. I see you <laughs> did something on Twitter around uh, around Facebook recently. Yeah, I a video today actually on on Facebook that, that was quite good. Yeah, yeah I did. Um, my main take is. So the un the future of the business is uncertain. I think if you pretend you know how much it's going to grow at this point, um, well, maybe there's some people that understand that business well enough, but the whole bet on the Reality Labs, which is a huge amount of CapEx um, and a big risk they're taking on probably, that's complete speculation. It could play out. If, if that's a big winner, then at this price, you do really well. If they somehow win over this metaverse, whatever that looks like, I don't know. I don't think the Facebook, like the family of apps are going anywhere. Maybe the growth slows down. I don't think it stops completely. I definitely don't think it reverses. But for at least the next five years or so, I think fair enough if growth slows down. But my whole thesis that would make it interesting is if they continued these buybacks at the current prices. So in that thread you're talking about, I said they recently bought back $50 billion of shares, um, which given was probably at much higher stock prices. But if they did that now, that's 10% of the company or 9% of the company or something like that. And they can afford to keep buying back 30 to $40 billion shares every single year, even with the huge amount of CapEx spend that they have. So if the company keeps trading cheap, they could just keep on offering shareholders a return through retiring shares. Um, and it's similar to what eBay kind of has done. My main argument was if you're an eBay shareholder over the last three or four years, besides the last two months when two months when everything got hit hard. Um, you've had a great return on investment. I don't know if you want to pull eBay up on Ticker if you yeah, can, Jack. I am. One second. But they've, they're probably a great case study for buybacks in recent history, at least anyway. I think they've retired about 40 to 50% of shares over the last five years or so. Um, that's a guess from memory. We'll have a look in just a second. And that's really generated some great returns. And I think... There's no way you could argue Facebook is as dead as eBay in any way. Like it's going to stick around whether or not it's growing at high rates or not. So right. if they can make good capital allocation decisions and maybe start to buy back a certain amount of shares. So what's that about 40% of shares down from a yeah, thousand down to last five years. Yeah. Down to about 680 from about 1080. So yeah, around 40%. And I assume, I don't know actually their revenues couldn't be growing too much over that time. Let's take a um, look. Yeah, slight, well, a little bit of growth, yeah, more than I thought, growth. to be honest. But yeah, not significant. Although the returns have been pretty good on that investment, so yeah, much more than the ten percent revenue growth over the five years. Yeah, I have no indication that they're going to do this. Like, it would be appealing in my mind. That would be something that made me consider actually buying the stock if they kind of planned out this five-year plan of huge amount of buybacks. Um, but other than that, I can't get too excited without knowing how the Facebook reality labs plays out. Mm. Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I have a similar view. I probably should have bought Facebook in like March, 2020. <laughs> you it and everyone else. Watch, well, it, it was on my watch list and uh, I mean, I was a little bit behind on updating valuations and things and I just kind of missed it. Like it got down to 
what I view, like I thought it was worth 300 ish back then and it got down to 150 ish very briefly and I just flat out missed it. Um, but yeah, I, I think some things have changed, you know, at that time it was very much about, and it still is to a large extent, but it was very much about um, what's the monthly active user growth growth look like um that's obviously slowing down but they can still grow the average revenue per user quite a lot and that's um, still growing yeah and, and it felt um i mean those things are never nothing's a certainty when you're trying to forecast those things but they felt relatively predictable and you didn't have to make heroic assumptions for facebook to look reasonably attractive at that time and they're throwing off a lot of cash but what's changed for me now is this yeah, massive rebrand and a lot of capex going into um, the metaverse and so on. And I've just shared a screen. I don't know if you've got it there, Jack, but that's what the growth in Facebook capex looks like already um, from 2020 to 2021. I expect that to grow quite a bit further. So they're still throwing off a lot of free cash flow. It's just that free cash flow is now getting allocated into a largely kind of unknown space in terms of what that'll actually generate. And I don't know if that's just I don't know if that's taking cash out to the car park and lined it on fire, or I don't know if it's like is going to be as successful as the Instagram bet. I just can't put odds on that. I don't know. I don't know it well enough. So it seems um, hard it's to a believe. Tough one for me. It, I, I agree on in like that's the issue. Um, how much of this is just being lit on fire? Like you said, I have a hard time believing it would be all of it. Surely they could generate something sure. from it. Now, whether it's a positive return, that's obviously a big question, but. Even if they got, say, half this money back, as long as the capital expenditures don't grow beyond their current free cash flow, which I doubt would happen, but who knows? Um, it's not as uh, it's 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 almost just like um, I don't know what to describe it as. It's not like super super painful. You obviously prefer it to be allocated better, but um, I think people are acting as though okay, they spent the ten billion dollars last year. That money's just gone forever. They're going to re recoup absolutely nothing from it, and I think that's. A little bit short-sighted surely they'll get something out of it whether they get all mm. 10 billion or whatever they keep spending is uh, that's obviously the big question um but surely they get something yeah. yeah i mean i mean historically i was just looking on um looking at some of the metrics for facebook it looks like they've earned about 20 percent return on investor capital is what kind of what they've averaged over the mm -hmm. last decade and i just don't know whether that drifts up or down <laughs> with any investments. Yeah. It's, it's it's hard for me to figure out. So but how, but how much, um I how mean much was the Instagram certain... purchase? Sorry to interrupt. I remember like a billion dollars. Yeah. Around that. Basically yeah. Any tiny <laughs> to this. I mean looks looks basically free now. Yeah. <laughs> looking yeah. back at it. Um and and I mean the the whole thing which I'm sure we'll get into valuation shortly is like at a certain price like you say, Jack, they're not going to put 100% of free cash flow, you wouldn't think, into right. CapEx. So at a crazy, certain price, <laughs> um, at a certain price, you know, some of the stuff doesn't matter. Um, I don't quite know where that number is, though. So one thing I guess I'll add on there, with the Facebook Reality Labs, firstly, it's grown out about 100% over the past two years or so. Um, but that's just from that same investor presentation, I think. So it's definitely a business doing well, although it is unprofitable currently. I don't think that will remain the case in the next five years or so. But it doesn't have to be thought of as necessarily just the whole metaverse going too far into the future, which I think is a very long-term vision that is being overplayed maybe. In the shorter term, just the AR and VR type of space, like I think even with just Oculus, they're going to do really well. Um, how well, I don't know, because I don't understand that industry or how profitable or anything that type of business can be. But just through that business, I think they can do, maybe the CapEx is somewhat justified. Um, it's not a completely unknown bet, but long term, that's when it gets really unknowable, I guess. Can we think of major blunders that Facebook has had, maybe beyond kind of the general controversy of like just collecting data and that sort of thing? But is, are there some projects that Facebook has gone through that are clear, just this was a huge waste of money and maybe that can be sort of telling because uh, so far it seems like they've been quite outstanding in, in capital allocation um but maybe looking at some mistakes would be a better idea in this case well how much did they spend on libra that was a big one yeah how libra. much libra purchase let's see or, or libra i should say yeah. um it wasn't a purchase right it was yeah, capital external development um 
Yeah, I mean, ju- I think it's the nature of them being like a software business. If they're testing new features and things, they can roll it out to small groups. And if they flop, you know, most of the users don't see a lot of this stuff. Um, right. Yeah, I, it's Facebook's been a really interesting one because I think probably when Facebook was first going public, I think they were just building the mobile app at, at the time. So they've evolved <laughs> a lot. And um, there was a lot of people that might have just dismissed them as like the next MySpace. And, you know, why would you ever put your money there? It's going to go to zero. And um, I think they've done a pretty good job of proving how durable the Facebook user base has been. And it's obviously growing <clears throat> still growing outside the US um, at a reasonable rate. Um, And the other thing that kind of comes to mind for me is like, it it seems like the life cycle of a social media platform is like, you know, teenagers and 20 year olds get on a platform like Facebook, then the boomers come in and so on and the teenagers move to Instagram and then Mm -hmm. the boomers come in and now they're going to TikTok. And I I don't know if eventually, you know, Facebook starts to lose a few users. I don't know. My question there would then be, they bought Instagram, bought WhatsApp. Did they just buy one of the kind of up and coming ones when another one of those shifts happens? That I doubt they're going to be able to buy TikTok, but who knows? Um, it, it's whatever comes after TikTok or something like that, or maybe one of their platforms completely evolves, whether it be Facebook or, or Instagram or something else. Um, that's, that's one thing they've proven to do well is, is they've made some really good acquisitions that have been just phenomenal, like with Instagram and WhatsApp, um, in that they've maintained a, a large amount of control, have huge amounts of data for, for better or for worse, um, and tons of users, 3 billion users, even if that doesn't grow. That's an enormous amount uh, of, of market power. Um, so my question would be, Who's to say they don't just buy another up and coming one when, when the time comes and, and it ends up being even half as successful as something like an Instagram or another Facebook. Regulations, well, however, I guess, makes that a bit more difficult these days. Um, sure. It seems like they get pushed back on almost anything they suggest right. they want to acquire. Assuming that it is large, I guess they could get something on a really early stage. But I guess they, the CapEx is kind of just fine in the sense I think they need to develop develop something from the inside of the company not rather rather than just buying it from outside sure did they uh did they get a lot of pushback with the instagram um acquisition i seem to remember like a little bit but it didn't i, I don't i don't remember it being like a, a big issue for getting instagram I, I get the environment's different now a few years later not that i know of i know people thought they were overpaying at the time but <laughs> Mm. laughing all the way yeah. to, all, all the way to the bank <laughs> on that one <laughs> yeah i don't think i even knew what the stock market was when they bought instagram so. <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> true wait we have jason and, in the chat um saying weak moat jason loves facebook doesn't he, yeah, he he's a huge fan <laughs> <laughs> he was just messaging me this morning about how excited he was for this episode because it's his favorite company. Yeah, but he considered... watches us on the Oculus, right? Like he yeah. has us like right up yeah. here. And he's considering putting a hundred percent of his money in, into Facebook. He's going to move the whole portfolio over. And he was talking about it last week. You know, if you're listening closely. Um, so yeah, I he's a huge fan. Um, but mm-hmm. this question of moat, losing users, you have competition. There's always going to be competition in especially a software space where. It's really about keeping people on the platform and there's new ideas, new formats every every day. Um, and you can adapt your platforms. They've added things like stories to compete with Snapchat. They have Instagram reels to comp- compete with TikTok. Um, even if they might not be the leaders in those specific space, uh, there's competition all the time and they have to adapt. And sometimes they do that well, sometimes they don't. And that's the same for any social media software business. Um, but how, how durable is the Facebook moat if it has one at all? Uh, what is I guess what is the Facebook moat? Is it just the the data flywheel of sorts and that they know what people want and then they can go from there? Uh, and it's very hard to get 3 billion people's worth of data. So I imagine that's somewhat of a moat. Yeah, I think it, um, I think it depends how you look at it. There's probably two aspects here. There's the, um, there's a moat in terms of keeping users, which is, 
you know, when you get into network effects and it's better because all your friends are on it. And like, if you're the only person on Facebook, it's kind of useless, right? <laughs> and in that respect, it's hard for a new social media platform to come on, to come on and then um, very quickly acquire, like, you know, all your friends to, to make you want to go on that pl platform as well. And they did a good job with Instagram in that respect. And I think it helped because it was kind of part of the Facebook family when it really started growing. Um, the other aspect of it is from an advertising perspective, like what would make small businesses or large businesses for that matter want to spend money on the, one of Facebook's platforms. And, um, you know, that's effectively the return that they're getting out of that advertising spend, right? And this competition in that space with Google and, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and Facebook more recently have mentioned that they've kind of struggled. A couple of years ago, they were talking about you know, they'd been able to monetize the newsfeed on Facebook really well, but they'd struggled to transition that monetization to stories on Instagram where people were starting to spend a lot more time. And now they're starting to struggle with um, shifting towards like reels on Instagram, kind of similar to the TikTok platform, I guess. So yeah. there's some challenges there, I think. Um, but again, it's hard to quantify the impacts to some of that stuff. Uh, yeah, somebody, seeing go seeing ahead, a lot of that, I kind of wonder if they stop trying to innovate in that space and now they're really just trying to figure out okay what are what's the competition doing and can we just copy what they're doing shameless cloners yeah shameless <laughs> cloning but I, i'm yeah. not sure if that's really the dna of of facebook yeah um, i'm come to think of it what's the what's been their last real innovation that that's been in-house like a major thing birthday like, reminders <laughs> <laughs> the book, very right? important the show. yeah Facebook book. Yeah, I haven't seen the that poke. in a while. So oh, we're talking years ago. I, 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 yeah. can't, I can't think of anything in the last couple of years that's besides no, an acquisition. The most recent one is WhatsApp Pay. So WhatsApp Pay has okay. been spreading all across emerging markets. That's going to be huge, I think. Okay. There's something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but they've, I mean, they've done a good job of cloning. Like they cloned oh, stories yeah. from Snapchat. Um, and that everyone kind of laughed at that when it turned up on their Snapchat feed, I think, because right. uh, when it turned on their turned up on the Instagram feed rather, but that within a year or so kind of dominated and sort of dwarfed Snapchat stories, I, I would think. So, you know, I, I, will, think say, I will say with Reels, they uh, it, it's compared to TikTok. I think the TikTok experience is actually quite a bit better still. Uh, not to say that Instagram can't can't step it up, but um, maybe that's just because TikTok's had a little bit longer to run their algorithm and, and really fine tune it. Um, but as of now, um, they're definitely lagging there. I, I do agree, though, that that Instagram stories in particular is pretty much as good, if not better, than uh, than Snapchat stories for at least a lot of people. Um, so they were able to clone that pretty pretty well. I don't know if I don't know how easy it's going to be to do the same thing with a video platform. It's kind of a whole different thing. You know, I think all this social media stuff is kind of just noise that they're putting out in front. What I think Mark is looking at is Tencent's business model, and he wants to create that super app. That's what he's going for. Mm -hmm. I think all this metaverse, everything is just, it's just like putting everyone else in the metaverse where like people are focusing there, they're building something else. That's what I think. <laughs> so you think, it, you think it's a, more of a distraction than anything? A decoy. I think, yeah, I mean, sure, they... Put the $10 million dollar decoy? Company. It's pretty expensive. I mean, maybe he does actually believe in it, but I think he's going for the super app, 10 cent business model. I think that's what he's going for. Sure. And I think last week, Frank brought up that point, like 10 cent versus Facebook. Like if you look at it, 10 cent seems like a better investment, right? Because it's easier in a way to figure out the economic prospects of 10 cent as opposed to Facebook. Is there thoughts on that? I, I, I kind of like the thought that Tencent's almost like the mature version of what Facebook wants to be. It makes sense. Like Facebook does have a number of those elements. Tencent just has a few more, um, especially, especially like gaming, uh, gaming and, and music in, in particular. Tencent Music, all the gaming companies they own, that's, a, that's the huge difference. Facebook tried gaming and I failed pretty spectacularly years ago, I'd say. Um, they had a few games there for a while that were pretty popular, like way, way early on. Um, but they were never really able to ride that, um, which is kind of interesting. So they were able to pivot away from that, I suppose. 
Yeah. Well, would you say uh, they're getting into gaming with Oculus? Maybe. Is that more of the hardware around gaming, or are they actually going to try to develop their own games and their own universe as, as they're kind of getting at? That, that's that's what I struggle with, and I think everyone would because it's hard to say. It's like developing the consoles or developing the actual games. I mean, it seems like if you can get the games, there's a lot more scalability there than with selling the hardware. It's a lot harder to do that. Do you guys see like any sort of monopoly that Facebook has? Or at least any area where Facebook is just absolutely dominant. Well, here's a Justin Vest actually made this comment. Um, basically, that people are addicted to their whatever their favorite social media is, um, which for many people is Instagram and Facebook. Whether that remains the same 20 years from now is obviously a big question and is going to be very difficult. But people do spend a lot of time, even if they complain about it and they know it's bad, they spend a lot of time on these things. Um, so yeah, is they'll, that a, they'll is they'll that a monopoly it. in itself? They'll complain about it on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It, it, the I, town I, square, right? It's the town square. Sort of, yeah. The, the uh, small echo chamber town squares. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little village. Right. Right. Yeah, and, and I, I don't know. I think um, if there's someone that I want to contact that I don't have like their phone number, phone number, or I've never really talked to that much before. Like Facebook and Messenger is, is the place to go. It's easily mm -hmm. number one for yeah. me, at least. I use Messenger for not not almost everything, but for a lot of things. Um, and then like I use Signal as well, which is like that open source like messaging system you may have heard about. That as part partly as backlash to WhatsApp and Messenger potentially looking through stuff. The same guy made it, right? The same guy who made WhatsApp made Signal, isn't it? I I know like Jack Dorsey endorsed it, sort of ironically. Um, no, but the founder is the same, I think. Like he it, sold WhatsApp to Facebook and then made Signal. I didn't actually know that, but I I'll, I'll take your word for it. I don't know if it's just specific to Australia and I'm probably the perfect age that when Facebook was kind of taking off, I was a teenager. It was the new app. It was like Facebook was huge when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could ever get off Facebook or Instagram just in the sense that I have so many memories and things attached on that platform, whether it's through photos, um, being connected with friends that I have from high school. Like that is literally the only way I can stay in touch with any of these people. I use Messenger mm -hmm every single day. Um, I'm in multiple groups, one-off conversations. I use their marketplace to buy and sell things in my um, hometown. Yeah. But again, I don't know if that's an international thing or, but here in Australia, like I don't see Facebook fading away at all for my age group. Definitely with the younger generation, it certainly is, but they use TikTok and Snapchat. They're the big two, I guess, for the younger generation. But I don't think that really takes away from what Facebook already has. And I think they can keep for at least five to 10 years, probably more. They might not be adding on new customers, I guess, over time, but I, I don't think that matters too much. That, that's kind of like what water is free is saying. It's, it's about the network effect is a kind of a moat and it's hard to create a new social network. Everyone is already on there. And as an example, I can't really reach out to old friends on TikTok. It's a fair point. Um, I, I like that, that thought, Frank, that, um, it's it, you almost have this attachment to your profile that you've created over the years and like you don't want to delete it or, or ignore it for too long or, or people will just bother you. They'll reach out and be like, hey, um, whether it's someone that you've talked with recently or not, um, that is a unique benefit of having so many people on the platform. Almost everyone's on it. Uh, so if you want to find someone, it's just like a good go-to. Could someone else get to that level? And sure, but it's <laughs> it's very hard once uh, once people already have kind of a favorite. And even if there was a new app that come along that I started using way more than Facebook and Instagram, I would still, 20 years time, I still want to see my Facebook, check on the people I've known growing up, check on my old photos, my old memories and everything else. Like I don't think the existing customers go away too much. Maybe the time spent on the platform fades away slightly, but overall they're going to keep a huge user base for a very long time, in my opinion. So how much do you discount the things outside of the ads platform then? Because that's that's the bread and butter and probably will be for a very long time still 
even if it even if it shrinks a little bit i don't even but i'm not really sure if that will happen um at least anytime soon uh how much do you discount everything around the ads platform are you re that's the primary analysis that's where most of the cash was coming from or, or do you, you even look at anything else right o almost like kind of like with alibaba for example uh, there's so many different sub businesses but you, we just kind of focus on a couple mainly you got e-commerce which is the bread and butter maybe you got cloud and then you could look at a lot of the rest maybe you want to discount those because of regulations or whatnot but um kind of focusing on the, those core businesses which right now is ads so how nervous are we about ads shrinking or not growing to whatever level we need and how much are we worrying about the projects like the metaverse or whatever that aren't really having to do with ads specifically well i'm not worried at all because i don't own it <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you get what i'm saying brad come on <laughs> i mean uh senator we run ads. yeah please thank you please and thank you I guess in the ideal world, you want to be able to buy, you want everything else outside of the ads business to be for free, which at the current price, I don't think that's quite true. Um, Jack, if you want to pull up that discounted cash flow I shared, this is the same one I brought up in my video. Um, <laughs> it, <laughs> we got a flash of Mark. <laughs> <laughs> is that, what did you see about Facebook? <laughs> Wait, let me, yeah, let me, if I, uh... <laughs> Oh, can you can right, you say one, that one more time one more time <laughs> okay go ahead yeah it, this is the cash flow uh dcf from your video um you said right yeah is that uh, can you see that full screen or do i need to zoom in or anything uh it's a little yeah, small good. i can see it all right um so anyway i have the bear base and bull case down the um, right hand side and if you can see the growth inputs oh sorry i put my mouse over it like the key assumptions here in the bear case, I'm saying 5 4 and 3% with a 10 exit multiple, which I think is pretty insane. I think if you don't think Facebook can generate those type of returns, um, I, I just don't know. Like, I think it just has to. Even if you're looking at a free cash flow per share basis, just through buybacks, I think that's very achievable, even if nothing else grows. Um, base case, I've used 7 6 and 5%. Again, extremely low. And bull case, I'm using 10, 15, and 7% with a 16 exit multiple. I think that's all fairly reasonable and probably conservative assumptions. Mm -hmm. And then I've weighted those 50% for the base case and 25% for bull and bear. And you do get about a 16% discount to intrinsic value, even just relying on those low gross numbers. So that's where it does get somewhat appealing where i think nothing else really matters they don't have to grow much at all um they really just have to slightly outpace inflation um, which i think is fair enough and then if metaverse pays off or i should say facebook reality labs because what that actually turns into we don't really know mm -hmm. um then you get the bull case kind of returns i guess and even probably more so because I'm using these low exit multiples, assuming that it's a somewhat dying business. But um, what happens yeah. if you? Uh, I, I'm I'm kind of in your similar target buy prices for in the bear case. Um, like you, you have an intrinsic value of around 535 billion. That somewhere in kind of the mid fives is where I I'd be looking to probably swing pretty big. And it, it's it's like flirting with it. It's like keeps hitting around 600 and then coming coming back up a little bit. I don't know if it's going to keep going. Um, but that's where I'd be very interested. Uh, what if you move that exit multiple up to 12 or 13? Um, what kind of on the, bear on, the, case? On, the, on the bear case, where it's just very modest growth for a number of years. Now, now Frank, also, go, go ahead, Tom. Frank, does this account for the Farmville asset? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll add some more onto that net cash pile. <laughs> for Farmville. A few, few trillion. <laughs> um, so now, when you add that, when you make the bear bearish assumptions of mo very modest growth of the thirteen exit mm -hmm. multiple, now all of a sudden it looks like it's a decent deal. Um, not a smoking deal, but not not too bad. Uh, smoking meats deal. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but I, I think if you can get it at that price, where you have a very conservative ten multiple, no no one really cares about it that much. It kind of plugs along still throws off cash but it, it's growing very slowly it, it looks very attractive um unless you just hate the business of course and you think it's going to shrink and not grow at all 
Yeah, you know, there's, there's a right price for shrinking businesses too, I suppose. <laughs> you just got to be careful. Jack, I think you said something like it's it's very hard for a new company to come in and, you know, become this incredible social network. And I'm thinking about Clubhouse. How many of you guys signed up for Clubhouse back when it was getting started? I tried it. couple, yeah. Clubhouse. What happened to them? That's yeah, <laughs> what happened to them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard about Clubhouse in a long time. And I don't know if that's because Twitter came out with their spaces and it was just better because all your buddies are already on Twitter and you can interact with, with them instead of trying to get everybody to sign up for Clubhouse. But I thought it was, a, it was kind of a cool, I had a cool couple experiences on Clubhouse. It's just like this, this new way to interact with people. And it felt exciting and then it just and i think that that speaks to how difficult it is to create like one of these sticky social platforms yeah you're you're starting with no no network facing off against right. huge networks twitter yeah. facebook linkedin like on the professional side like it, you, you have a huge a, a few very large players that all can kind of oh hey that's a nice feature let's add it real quick right <laughs> and it's very difficult to innovate um, because of that. Yeah, it, it also seemed like the platform where um, where you had to be probably a slightly extroverted type person to jump on a voice call with people you don't know. I would say, <laughs> whereas like anyone can just mindlessly scroll through TikTok and um, you know find something that suits them. Yeah, that's my two cents. Solemn activity. Yeah, that's true. I think Clubhouse almost seems more like it was more of a reaction to the the pandemic than anything. Just like everyone is at home looking for something new to hang out at, at, at like a you know a public place. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how much that sort of trend. I guess it sort of goes into the metaverse, meeting in virtual places kind of thing. How much of that is going to really be a, a major part of life twenty years from now? Um, probably it'll be something. I'd imagine, uh, but whether it replaces huge swaths of meeting in person. I don't know. Well, one question I have about Facebook, it seems like there's a lot of, and I don't really have the numbers on this, but it seems like there's a lot of outflow of talent at Facebook, at least is that right? in the higher levels. I don't know how it is at the kind of the engineering level, but I'm curious if you guys have any insights about that anecdotal or. Have you, uh, have you read something about that recently? Was it, uh, Not recently, Peter Thiel I, leave, uh, recently. Yeah, I'd say in the last year, it seems like I've just been hearing about kind of people in the C-suite. Peace it's management out. Management shown, right? That's what, like people don't want to have Facebook on their CV because. Right. Yeah. I've read a few well, things about that. I guess yeah. I've had, they had like the whistleblower thing pretty recently. Remember that? Um so maybe, maybe, I, I guess there has been some. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I could say it's been accelerating. I haven't really noticed that. Maybe it has, but okay. Yeah, water is free. Says some of the most senior people left recently. So validation. <laughs> yes, senior engineers. He says. Yeah, it's a good point. It's probably something we don't spend enough time thinking about with some right. of these companies. Yeah. I I wonder how much of that. As, I mean, they're a large company. They got plenty of employees. Um, I wonder how much of it is because of the shift towards throwing ten billion dollars a year plus into the metaverse project. It's a, sort of a different sort of thing, very hardware focused potentially. Um, maybe, maybe it's something like that. They're just not paying that much attention to some of their older projects. I, I don't know. It could be something having to do with that. Just general company transitioning. Yeah, I was listening to Bill Brewster recently, and he was talking about how with a lot of these tech companies in Silicon Valley, uh, when the stock price starts to, to dip, a lot of the employees aren't as incentivized to work there, right? Because a lot of their, their pay is in, in stock options and whatnot. And so there can be this kind of negative feedback loop that happens when a, a company's stock price starts to take a dive. And I wonder if some of that is being experienced at Facebook. Sure. Is this like the uh, 
there's only one reason to work at a company, but many to leave it <laughs> instead of invest and in, invest and sell. Is it kind of like that, maybe? Let's roll with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a very optimistic take, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Facebook. I don't know how it compares to some of the other companies, but um, some of the numbers I've seen over time suggest they pay their employees very well, and. Um, I wonder if they're going to have to ramp that up even more to keep bringing in talent. I don't know. I, I have to include Jesse's comment here real quick. A large chunk of the ten billion was for sunscreen to be used during <laughs> surveys. <laughs> zinc, zinc oxide, to be specific. Yeah. We call that maintenance capex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Protection-based compensation. Um, <laughs> Frank, I can't mentioned... believe that photo yeah. is real. I cannot believe that photo is real. Do we know that it's real? Do we have some kind of authenticity? <laughs> on, it was on, on the internet. Stuff? Of course it's oh, it real. must be real. Yeah. <laughs> um, Frank, you were mentioning Reality Labs growing at 100%. How big in terms of revenue is Reality Labs? Do you have a sense in terms versus their ad business? I mean, I'm sure it's still very small, but... Yeah, is it's it tiny. A, I could, um... Approaching anything meaningful what's something in the metaverse <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> tiny i don't know exactly though a trillion dollar real estate market cap in digital real estate yes we got to get some waterfront fake estate so hang on i'll skip share my screen in a second i'm ready for it i'm ready for you chris this is just from the science of headings right up. Um, I can't access the whole thing because I don't pay for it, but um, you can see a chart here anyway. It's can you see that screen? All right. Um, so I guess that shows some of the growth in revenue since 2020 grew. Can you see that on the screen? Yep. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so 127% in 2020, 100%. But if you look on the left-hand side, as a percentage, it's only a tiny amount. 115, I guess, is a billion. 2021, only 2.2 .2 billion from Reality Lab. So a tiny, tiny percentage. But yeah, doubling each year. So that can add up quick, as us compounders know. Yeah, as long as the uh, expenditures don't compound as quickly. Good point. Which uh, one thing about that, just the amount of spending, it's kind of hard to spend more than that on a particular project. Uh, if you're really focusing on it, of course, like how, how much, how much can you really work on at one time when you're trying to innovate with something like this? I, I just, I'm, I'm only saying that because I don't, I don't know how much more they could really spend on it in a given year if it really wasn't producing anything. Um, or they didn't have some idea that had some real traction. So it seemed I, I like to think in my head that the 10 billion a year is kind of like a cap, maybe 15. I don't see them going much more beyond that, unless again it starts producing some serious income. Um, I don't know if you guys agree. It's more of a more of a hunch than anything, but uh, it, I feel like it'd be hard to spend say 40 billion dollars in a year, their whole whole annual cash flow, just on this infant project, essentially. Yeah, I don't have any sense for that. Is it, what kind of yeah. cap there might be? Facebook is really in people's too hard pile people just would uh, not admit it but it's in the too hard pile a lot of facebook is unknowable <laughs> pretty much yeah well, there you I've, go I've guys never, too hard yep yeah. i've never personally even tried to spend one billion dollars so i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Dude, well, you here. haven't lived smoking meats come on <laughs> get out that checkbook that's a lot of wagyu <laughs> <laughs> Okay, should we it's, get it's, into some comments or do you guys have lizard? Sure, do we, we need to make it? Do we need to vote? Yeah, let's vote before we do comments. Should we, should we get a, a few questions on Facebook specifically and then we can vote? We can kind of save some of the others for after that. Yeah, if there's any in there. Sure. Uh, let's take. I'm going back towards the beginning to see if there's anything in here. Well, we we got to figure out how to how to win over. We respect your privacy. I think for the vote, I, we got. Uh, we should ask people in the live chat like if they own Facebook, if someone. Yeah, we got any Facebook for more than five years. I, I'm I sure there are a few. Any it seems like owners? a few from the comments. I'm yeah, saying. based based on the comments. Uh, 
Uh, well, it's here's an interesting, interesting comment fun, from. Uh, I got an interesting comment from Felix here that it's uh, Felix. He mentions he's comparing it to something like an Apple, which has kind of its own ecosystem. Uh, Apple didn't have a fundamental business model shift that was unproven. That's kind of like what this metaverse thing is. Interesting point. Um, it kind of yes. did. They were kind of shifting away from a hardware business into a more software approach, which it, it's it proven a, now, but it wasn't really proven yet. But, I guess. but they already had that that traction there. It, this, at least to me, this feels very different. Um, you have Facebook ads, the, the social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp. And then you just kind of have this thing on, on the side. Maybe they can integrate it. I just don't see how easily. Um, whereas with like the Apple ecosystem, it's like, okay, you have the hardware already. Now let's add some software to it. it Are you it talking about the App Store, Frank? Yeah, partly. Just their software in general. But yeah, App Store was a big part of it. But that's but that's how kind of I kind of view the difference there with Apple. I, I, they got the hard, I'd say the hard part, which is getting the hardware out. Um, and then you can sell all the software after that whereas facebook's trying to do it the, almost the other way around if, if they're trying to give everyone vr headsets or something like that i won't try to pretend that apple wasn't a much better much more appealing thing <laughs> yeah. at that time in hindsight right. obviously but um <laughs> right. they, I, I just don't think that it was completely proven i think that's why it was trading at 12 times earnings or whatever it was at the time is because the market really didn't understand this but yeah there's did, risk for but, sure yeah Brad was buying Apple back then. Ah, don't remind <laughs> me. That, oh, that, that reminds me, uh, I, I, I saw um, that today was Apple Dividend Day and Warren Buffett brought in like $200 billion uh, in his uh, quarterly dividends. for, for Maybe Berkshire. $200 million. Um, yeah, two two hundred million. Excuse me. Yeah, that'd be like the quarter of the company. <laughs> yeah. two, millions, million billions. Dollars. They're all the same. Yeah, it's all, it's all the it's same all structure right. level. Yeah. Uh, two hundred million dollars just in the Apple dividends. One one thing that is interesting to note with the whole Facebook Apple comparison. I mean, Facebook's grown a lot faster than when than Apple was in twenty sixteen. I would say. Um, I don't was, know if we yeah. have any. Can we compare those numbers on ticker? Maybe um, we pull up their growth. So Facebook's growing faster, and they're at a what fifteen times earnings multiple. I mean. Apple was a lower multiple, and they were also returning a lot of cash, so it got looked kind of even cheaper. When you Jeez, that I, year over year, so what years do you want to look at? Like 20, 15, 10, 10 to sixteen or something. All right, we'll do ten. I'll do the seventeen. So we have a bit of a range, and well, yeah. If you go back to, I mean. <laughs> They had, oh, still, they, they had a slow they had a noticeable slowdown right here and that's definitely a lot slower than what um facebook's been doing well i i think people were worried they were becoming mature right like mm -hmm. they were mm. leaving growth mode and that clearly hasn't transpired that way well to an extent their hardware was kind of maturing in that sense uh -huh. it was really through these different services that right restarted that growth of course they still had some pricing power in the hardware and everything as well but compared to the early 2000s and stuff when it was growing at ridiculous rates. Yeah. Hmm. And I mean, again, similar to Facebook, like Apple have retired so many shares that on a per share basis, the earnings have grown a huge True. amount in the last five years. <laughs> but I mean, look at this last year, 33% revenue growth. Crazy. Yeah. For an already massive top line. But that is a good point that, uh, that you made Tom that, Facebook's in a better growth position, it seems, than, than what Apple was at the same time uh, when they had that sort of thing going on. Mm -hmm. Quran's gone private. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How He's fitting. protecting his privacy. <laughs> we already got your face, Quran. Yeah. Um, Kristen just brought up a comment saying Facebook grew 37% this year, which is pretty insane that it's down so much on 37% growth. That, that's that it was funny because it's like, oh, okay, users, users were slightly down, but meanwhile, revenue is up, revenue per user was up all time. It's all on, they're all looking at the forward comments, so yeah, of that's course, the which problem, you have to do, yeah. which you have to do, but um, it's just kind of funny that like. It, people are acting like the company's bankrupt <laughs> in some cases. It's like, no, they're still throwing off $40 billion in cash, which, yeah, maybe it does shrink, but well, but you can't, but you can't get where, upset. <laughs> but where they're up from is 
is a shutdown in some sense, right? I mean, it's just been a, a wonky couple of years. How For much sure. of that is is factored in? Of course. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying that like anything's guaranteed, of course, but um, the, the sentiment is definitely very sour now. Um, and it was not that it was always rosy. It's definitely, the, Facebook's especially had some pretty rough PR adventures, especially over the last few years. I'd say. Um, but uh, it, it's there's been a noticeable shift since that last earnings call. And to a lesser extent, since they announced the metaverse stuff. Um, and uh, I don't know how much of it is just Mr. Market being emotional and how much yeah. of it is, is legitimate concerns. Because there, there are definitely some obvious risks with all of this. Um, so, yeah. Before we vote, should we show the portfolio? Should we show the punch card portfolio? I mean, I dare I yeah. suggest that even. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, guys, you got Frank Smirkin over there. I think I know what that's <laughs> yeah. about. Uh, Frank, are, are, are you in? Are, are you okay? Zuckerbot's like, taking a victory lap. Yeah. Are, are you? Are you okay? Because like, I mean, I, I I hear that your back is hurting from from carrying the whole portfolio. <laughs> because well, sensei. Uh, we are up from a couple weeks ago when we showed it. Uh, we're, so we're getting our assets under management up a bit. Um, okay. Good. Right. Right here, KPG at 44% gains. Everyone else down double digits. <laughs> Even the currency is trying to pull it down, but it's like, yeah. nope. Just yeah. <laughs> Can um, you scroll down slightly, Jack? It's just out of screen. Oh, whoops. Hey, just, just it's quickly. Okay. Don't um, yeah, just, there you go. It's okay. We just don't quickly. I'm not... <laughs> we, we don't need to see the last one, guys. <laughs> yeah, poor SRG. That was, that was the most j jarring thing today. I'm like... Jeez, SRG said nine bucks. <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's down a lot. I, I think that's that's got to be interest rate fears. I can't see it being anything else. People just think real estate's going to be in trouble. That's all I can think. Um, that's, that's a yeah. massive drop. Because otherwise, just, the, news, um, the news has been pretty positive for since like a year ago. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's almost to like bottom of the pandemic prices. It's, yeah. Well, still a little bit to go, but I think it got down to six, maybe. Yeah. Can you go to the reporting section and pull up yes, sir. Um, the diversity report? I just want to see how much Kelly Partners makes up now. Would it be this one? Just you can where click it says, where it says group to say un... Do not group. Ungroup or something, yeah. Do not group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. about a th almost a third of the portfolio. <laughs> and we all started at 25%, so... Frank, I, I mean, we're, we're in this as a team, just so you know. <laughs> It's well, starting to turn like my portfolio. Well, I'm used to, to this know. happening. <laughs> one, <laughs> I'm used to the the, the success. <laughs> one, one thing to note is that um, uh, if we vote to add a holding, the new holding will take all of whatever the holding that's removed is. So if we wanted to remove KPG by chance, that new holding would now be 31.87%. It wouldn't be Ooh. like back to equal, equal weighting, which would make it an uh, added wrinkle, I suppose, for anyone who cares. <laughs> yeah. You got a target that, so. on your back, Frank. You got a target <laughs> on your back now. I feel like we, we discussed when we set this up that if we do get some weird skews, we might have to do a bit of rebalance. Oh, we're not, we're not, there, we yet. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. No, no, we're, we're far from that. If we got give, to give it a couple of months, yeah, yeah, give it like another week. <laughs> and, and then when KPG is seventy five percent of the portfolio, then we can we can make a decision. We just need uh, we just need load SRG to go to thirty or something. Can be a way. <laughs> that, would, that would be nice. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, so just to right. throw this in there, guys. So. We're getting close to the end. If anybody has a question you want to make sure we get to, hit up that super chat, or if you just want to show show the boys some love. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll take a look through here and see mm. see what jumps out. Yeah, last second. Hey Facebook Brad. Things. Hey Brad, do you want to get on a board with um with Eddie over at SRG? <laughs> oh the man, the people in the comments want it. I don't know. I, I got to get to know him a little bit better. Yeah, seems a little cagey. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's my sense. Yeah, I, I think I'd get along with Andrea. Maybe don't know. <laughs> I think you would, Tom. Yeah, they answered your question. No, no, I'm I'm thinking of a. Uh, it wasn't an A two mil. Where they, they they answered your question on a, on an earnings call, which is kind of fun. Super chat. Oh, super chat. 
Look at old this. school millennial says thank you. Well, well, we legend. appreciate thank it very much. Thank you. Legend. Appreciate it very thank much. Thank you, old school. Four ninety nine, <laughs> not quite five. Four ninety nine. It's a great deal. <laughs> thank you, old school. We appreciate it. You must work in uh, in sales, old school. I, I like that. Um, <laughs> right, should, should we vote? Any any, any last second thoughts? Well, uh, I got, I've got a um, question that's going to perhaps dictate my vote, Liz, a person. And because um, uh -oh. I've been relatively negative, I think, on, on Meta during this talk. But I guess it's the question really is, is it better than something that's already in the portfolio? So oh. um, I, I feel like I have a reasonable understanding of most of the businesses in there. But Turtle Beach is probably the one I've or it's definitely the one I've done the least work on. So. Um, I wouldn't mind just getting a feel for Jack, how you're thinking about Turtle Beach at the moment. Like, what do you sure. think it's, I mean, what do you think it's worth? I know there was a buyout offer a little higher than yeah, I'd probably, at the moment. I'd probably ignore that for valuation purposes. Um, mm -hmm. though I suppose it is out there as a possibility. Um, so right now they're at what, 23 bucks a share, which I'd say is probably close to a fair valuation. Um, at least in my, in my view, um, we haven't seen their Q4 earnings yet, which are coming out in two weeks. And I think that'll be very telling for the next probably couple years uh, for what sales might look like. Um, but let me get their exact multiple up because they're still, they're still trading quite cheap. Um, we're looking at something like $35 million a year in cash flow, free cash flow. And they have, what's their market cap at now? And they're currently at uh, about a three hundred fifty million dollar market cap. So, so basically, a ten, a ten multiple. Yeah, basically ten times free cash flow right now. Assuming they keep, I, they yeah. should be around there for for this last year. A lot of their sales come in Q four naturally. Um, so we'll see what exactly it ends up on. Um, but I'm expecting it to be probably close to that. Um, and they're pretty small, aren't they, Jack? Are they a mm -hmm. micro cap or a? No, small I don't. I don't know. Would cap? you count three three hundred fifty million as a as a micro it's cap? It's on the edge. It's small. It's on the edge. Yeah. Um, so the big question is, as they're diversifying into PC components away from console components and, and headsets, I should say, um, how much of that, how much of that can, how much, how much can that grow? Uh, which right now they've been growing it at something like, I think the last earnings call we saw is around like 25% year over year growth in that segment. So if they can keep that up and sort of diversify into PC space. Uh, that would be really great. Um, How's so, that, how's it, how's that yeah. flow through like an overall company basis? What sort of growth are you tossing around in your head? Uh, I think when I did my initial analysis, I was actually using almost flat growth um, for the next few years and using, I think I used like a 12% discount rate. And that was assuming mm -hmm. a starting a free cash flow of about 35 million. So if they remain pretty flat, um, I like it. Um, using a terminal multiple of, I think I was using like, 13 or 14 or something like that when I initially did it. But if they get any growth over that, it looks pretty good um, from these prices, which is around where I, where I was buying around the th mid threes, uh, mid 300 million. So it's, yeah. all I'm saying is I don't think it's a bad deal. Um, if, if it was at like 18, I'd be very hesitant to, to say like, yeah. oh, let's, uh, let's replace um, this with Facebook. It, given that it's in the, in the low 20s again, like that's a little bit helpful um, if you're trying to make a decision on whether you want to boot that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Well, let's well, just say- Well, I not, guess it's, it's up to the people what gets booted, right? Yeah, but exactly. I would, I, if I but, had but, to suggest to the people what- <laughs> <laughs> Had, had oh, SRG boy. not dropped as hard as it did, I might have suggested that, but it's at nine bucks. Like, yeah, you got some pretty good upside there for a more speculative kind of play. Um, because they have they have they have real assets there. It's the matter of selling them or redeveloping them. Um, so, what what about the question of? Because uh, I've thought of this question too, and like, there's not one that's like I'd obviously want to kick out. Um, other than like maybe you could make an argument for basically diversification. We already have two large Chinese quote unquote tech companies in there. So would you want to get rid Where of one of going, those? Jack? But it's a Dutch company. Yeah, yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> true. Um that, that that was like the only like obvious kind of fault in the portfolio, uh, assuming you're decently bullish in all of these, which I would generally be bullish on all of them. Um and then I guess the only other would be 
KPG could be relatively expensive, but it keeps it keeps throwing off great numbers. So, so overvalued. Yeah, yeah, right. That's all. That's that's like <laughs> the only argument I can think of against KPG is like maybe it's a little expensive, but it's it's still doing great. It's a good business. So, um, you know, yeah. Brett Kelly is doing like too good of a job. Like, yeah, exactly. Really <laughs> kicking it in the ass. I, I wouldn't want to bet Problem. against him um, at this point. <laughs> I feel like in in the KPG annual report, you should get like a. Probably same for Berkshire. You should get like an annual health checkup of the CEO report because I feel like it's quite, like it's quite a bit on that person. You know, you you need to see what the checkups like. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Anyhow. Shall we go? Shall we vote? Tom, have you made a decision? Uh, can I that? go last, please? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> The deciding vote. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Smoking. Meat, uh, so. Hopefully, I'm not the decider. Is anyone a definite yes or a no? I'll go first. I know. I know my answer. Yeah. Oh, we've right. got one now. Um, mine. I would not buy Facebook at the current pl- price, but relative to two positions in our portfolio, I would sure. prefer Facebook. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. And I and I own three of them in my own portfolio, so you can do the math on that one. <laughs> Fair. So, still a no, though. Two no's. Not, I'm a yes that... for our portfolio. I'm a yes for so punch yes card. for the punch card portfolio. Oh, yeah. So we got one I'm yes. A no for people. mine, but yes for punch card. That's fair. Yeah, we're not we're not we're not mandating that anyone go buy Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> this is for our theoretical <laughs> brownie points portfolio. This is intense. <laughs> All right, we got so one. one. We need yes, two more. No. We need two more. Wait, so you said no, Quran? Is that right? Yes. Yes, you said no. Okay. Um, I am. Before you answer, Brad, just think of the positions <laughs> in the portfolio. Just throwing that out there. Just a reminder. Can we get that picture of Mark on the screen just to really help <laughs> us think through this? Yes. <laughs> Wait, but I don't get to pick which one gets booted. Is it, how, how does that nope. piece play in? That, that's well, the it's in, it's in the fans' hands. It's in the people's hands, but. Do, do, do we have any opportunity to veto it or not? No. So, so Frank, no. you're saying you could be saying yes, and then the fans veto KPG. No. That's a possible. They're, they're, not, yeah. they're not crazy. Yes. They're not crazy. They're not crazy. <laughs> they're not crazy. <laughs> they're not. The people could vote KPG. They, they can troll, though. They're, they're, that's not <laughs> don't, don't put that out there. Don't put that out there. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, sure. I mean, I can't take it back. We're lying. <laughs> <laughs> they won't get rid of what have we got in there? We've got they're not getting rid of Tencent or Process. They're not going to get Surely rid of Barber. They won't they, get rid of Seratage. They love those two. No, I think Seratage is a risk. Oh, come on. Well, I yeah, think the it, people I are mean, turning on Seratage slowly. I, that, that could be the case. I, I, I do see it nah. hard. I see it hard to believe that um, Baba or Tencent would, would come out. I'd, I'd so I so I'm a no. Any elaboration, or are you just gonna leave it at no? He's I'm got gonna, no I'm faith in the people. Quran, I'm gonna pull a Quran and just say no. The wife's hotter. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> All right, so we need Tom. We both need to say yes. Well, you you can go first. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Tom should already I... reserved. Tom reserved the last. Vote. Yeah, yeah. So, so should I say yes, just so Tom has like ultimate pressure? Just remember, Jack. <laughs> no, you don't, actually don't bought do the that company. To you I, own I the do. Company. I do own some of it, but do you know what? There's I a real estate a company in there that you're not a big fan of. Yeah, it, you know, Jack, because there's of potential that, that it could. I actually could own replace. some. I own some Facebook. I don't own SRG. I don't own KPG. And I actually don't own process, but I only because I already have a bunch of Baba. It's kind of the big reason. I might actually Jack, switch Baba. Jack Turtle Beach is gone if you say yes. Turtle that, Beach. That's is that's gone. that's a that's my dilemma here. That's people, the risk the we people don't like. I think <laughs> Seritage is going. Don't listen to him, Jack. Don't listen to him. I, I, think, I, 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 think, it's, I think it I think it would be in a vote. It would probably be between Seritage and Turtle Beach. I I'd, I'd hesitate to see the others leaving. Jack um, Jack, we need you to look deep into Mark's eyes and tell us your answer. <laughs> Jack, did you Check the private chat I've sent. <laughs> what, what's this, uh, Quran? I'm going to turn my screen Look off. Look at in the case private it's... chat. <laughs> at least put the pressure on Tom. Do it for us. 
Yeah, you know what? Because of that, I, I'm gonna. <laughs> what is this? Is this a dab by Bill? What is that? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say yes. Um, as much as I, I, if I was gonna swing big though, I definitely wanted to be a bit lower than where it is. Sort of similar to what you were saying, Frank. Um, but I'm gonna say yes, partly because I, I want to see Tom sweat a bit. Now, <laughs> zoom back in on Mark. There we go. This is what we need. This is and tough. remember, okay, Tom, so think about Turtle Beach. You were asking questions. I know how you're feeling about that one. Yeah. Well, that, that that's hey, let's the not, hard Let's part. not write if, it off now, folks. <laughs> if I knew if I knew what was going to go, then this would be a more straightforward decision. But I really you don't, don't want to see. Go. The, the, have the some people faith in really the people. Don't want to see or something. Okay, I've got to have faith in the people. Um, <laughs> this guy's a, this guy's a fierce if, competitor, Tom. Look at him. But what if um what if the people what if all the people that vote haven't even watched us discuss this and they just randomly scroll through their community post and vote off the wrong one. Oh, untrustworthy voters yeah the no due the diligence no, the people will watched know. the people that haven't watched are more likely not to troll and will vote for turtle beach or seritage <laughs> what if um can the five of us just veto their vote and nope. say if we, nope. Nope. we have okay. to go with it. this is it <laughs> this is it okay okay so my my thought process is Turtle Beach is what ten times free cash flow, ten times mm -hmm. earnings, basically flat. Zoom in on the Zucks. Yeah, zoom. Give me a bit more zoom. More. We are get zoomed me, in. Get me right into those eyes. And we've That's got as far as we can go. Then we've got. You need a screenshot that and zoom to turn zoom on the screen. <laughs> then we've got Facebook. 15 times free cash flow, but still growing like 20% a year or something. Or yeah. no, it's going to grow slower than that, but still growing to certainly. Yeah, there's growth prospects for sure. Significant. The trouble is we don't know if the free cash flow is going to grow as fast in the future because we don't know where the CapEx is going to go. Yep. We don't know what return that's going to throw off. Um, Total pitch is cyclical. I think it's... I think it makes sense to make the switch, but I don't think <laughs> You're it. You're not make, making I don't the switch. Think, the people, but are. it's <laughs> not hitting me over the head. So I'm going to say that the mistress looks hotter than the wife, but in fact, the wife is always hotter. And I'll vote no. Wow, oh, wow. that was stressful. So when Facebook drops to 500 billion next week, we, we can we can make a <laughs> we can make yeah, another call drops, maybe. If it drops maybe like another 20 30 percent. Yeah, maybe we can vote again. Right. Well, look at that. Man, our port, our, that port, our, our our losing portfolio holds up. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel, Tom? The punch guard is punching through. <laughs> well, yeah, I feel like Charlie would be proud of that that hold. That the diligence, that lack of activity, or yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that stoicism, yeah. <laughs> well, there she is. I feel like I need a drink or something. It was just a bruise. Link in description. Just so everyone in the chat knows, you all know that Tom doesn't trust you now. There you go. <laughs> Tom does not trust you. He doesn't want to see SRG go. Is that it? Me and Jack no, have I, faith I, in the people. Never I trust it. the I trust the people watching. I I'm just concerned that a whole bunch of other people that haven't watched this might scroll past and just you know hear <laughs> that. How do you get a community a post? Just but going. don't you have to watch it? <laughs> have to watch our videos to get a community post? Yeah. Well, they might not have watched this episode though. They might have subscribed six months ago. Or hey, something. That, that I mean, that's 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 the electorate. That, that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, well, you're setting a yeah. you're setting a great punch card example for the people. I, I applaud yeah. you. Discipline. Yeah, we we should have um, we should have reminded ourselves of ourselves of the name of the channel before we voted just then. <laughs> we, we've had we've had what three votes? Two of them were for Facebook actually, and another uh, was for for ASOS. That, that that that's been those are those have been our three votes. Had a formal mm. vote on it. This has um, definitely been the closest to getting yeah. across the line, though, hasn't it? Yeah. I think even Are there any other stocks? Two, right? Was it? For Last what? time you voted on Facebook, uh, it was three was, two. Was it? I don't think so. I Maybe think it was. So. 
Maybe it was. Yeah. Are there any other stocks that we want to vote on in the future episodes? Anyone in the chat want to drop some in? The the, the people are talking about Carvana and um, Carmax and Carmax. Uh, so we'll definitely be covering that at some point in the future because that's been getting some buzz in the value space. Um, so stay tuned for that. I think next week's actually 13F season, uh, the end of 13F season. So we'll, we'll yes. be reviewing some of that. We're already seeing some action, uh, which is fun. Always, a, oh, it's always a fun episode seeing what the the big dogs have been doing. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> How are we performing compared to the market? Does anyone know? Uh, let me. Uh, I think you I can do that. Or, share, so. or let's compare ourselves to Arc. You know, like make us feel better. <laughs> we, we're getting crushed, to Arc, we're doing great. Let's see. You're today. Add a benchmark on. Share site and we'll compare them directly next to each other. Or the, the reverse be. Jim Cramer ETF. We can take a look at that one too. All right. We'll do SPY. It's SP500. And this is for this year. Oh, I didn't. We're actually only down about uh, less than 2% this year. I didn't realize that. Did I hear a way in that? Or. Oh. Yeah, this, this is a group effort here. Uh, Being carried. This, about, this is a team exercise. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the right. S&P is down um, almost uh, over 7% to start the year, whereas we are um, down only 2%. If we go. Hey. Yeah, it's good. it's about to get worse if you go back. We go to since six. first purchase. Not so bad. Yeah. Not so bad. We're down, we're down almost 12%. S&P is down uh, 4% since we started the portfolio back in October. Or I guess it was November first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so not so bad. I mean, we to to be fair, we talk about like if someone has a great track record and it's like four years, we kind of just immediately throw it out the window, right? So hopefully the people are giving <laughs> yeah, us some time to. to this build is short term noise here, guys. It this is, is just noise. Yeah, it, it's fun to look at, regardless. Yeah. All right. Four months free. Link in the description. Yes, shearside.com slash, slash punch card luck. investing, mm-hmm. I believe. And then you can check out that portfolio yeah. if you want to stare at it some more um, or uh, add your own portfolio in. You can create a free account as well. Uh, you don't need to get a paid account. Uh, the paid account gives you a lot more features. So uh, do yeah. look into that if, if you're interested. Yeah, if you are um, if you do own an ARC ETF, I see we've had a few, um, few comments on that topic. If you do own an ARC ETF, um, Shearside will give you some great reports on um, how much tax loss harvesting and that sort of thing you can do. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was very underhanded. <laughs> Jab. Sorry, Kathy. Any, any 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 final final words before we wrap this thing up? Well, should we take some questions? I feel like we've we've been fully yeah. in the metaverse today. Should, we, we, should, have we got we any other couple. questions? Yeah. I'm disappointed in Tom. That's all I got. Oh, come on. What about, I, I, what about hey, you know, I, it's not be, be, because I have it's the power because I have the power. Um, a lot of people were, they're not fans of Turtle Beach, but we got, we got our man Hoda Prime here. Uh, here's much better than SRG balance oh, sheet wow. earnings future. Okay. See, so we, we got some support. Uh, okay. But SRG yeah. has some potential. Total Beach was like just. <laughs> Come on! Like, I it's just, I'm just <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, whatever, whatever happens with SRG, if we fast forward five or six years, um, there's going to be wide variation in performance between Turtle Beach and Absolutely. SRG. I guess yeah. which direction it goes is no right. Um, yeah, you know that that's what people have different opinions. It's like oh, yeah. Lambo. I, I, would, I would never argue what... that Turtle Beach is going to be some like thirty bagger or something. No. And that's yeah. just, I mean, that's basically impossible. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I guess mean, anything anything's if, possible with hyperinflation, but um, <laughs> in real terms, yeah. If the SRG keeps dragging out these developments, there's you know, it, there's a much higher chance SRG goes bankrupt than Turtle Beach, I'd say. So, um, yeah, yeah. But the, but the upside's much greater if it works out. So also true. Yeah, risk reward at its finest. <laughs> Namely, man. There was some, this is off investing, but there were some comments by After Dinner Investor and a couple of others about the UFC tomorrow. Big fight with an Australian versus a New Zealander. Israel Adesanya yeah. versus Robert Whitaker. Well, we know Any what happened thoughts? last time. 
<laughs> the funny thing is, I, I do think it, Israel will probably win, but I'm hoping Rob can pull it off. There's also Super Bowl questions, and I honestly don't know who is playing. Yeah, that's uh, like a baseball tournament or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, 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 that is um, Rams versus uh, who beat the no Rams the, the, the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, Los Angeles Rams. Who's the who would what's the, the Super Bowl? Cincinnati the, the Bengals. Bengals. That's right. They they upset the yes. Chiefs. Um, <laughs> um, so Cincinnati Bengals versus la rams a bit of an unlikely matchup so but the, the well, playoffs this year have been have been really really good um what's so. what's very unusual here is i think just a couple of you maybe it was two or three years ago for the first time the home team the, the, the one of the teams in the super bowl was playing in their home stadium it's the first time that happened it's happening again this year so oh. Wait, I didn't even realize that. <laughs> it's in Los Angeles. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Why is this? Why would why would they not play in their home? So normally stadium? the Super Bowl, I I don't know why exactly they do this, but they actually host it in like just they pick it before the season starts. They're like, it's, all right, we're gonna yeah. host the Super Bowl here. I I think it's some sort of revenue sharing thing, like so small markets can get a chance to get some of that Super Bowl money or something like that right um, well and people people book super bowl tickets before the season even starts right like they don't necessarily care who's going to play in the super bowl but it's, right. it's an event right something like mm. that yeah um but it's been like that for quite quite some time yeah not i don't think forever but uh definitely for a, a long time i'm, I'm a baseball I, guy before a football guy but um i try to follow along yeah. <laughs> What was your um? What was your high school betting average, lizard person? My, <laughs> um, full high school? Uh, I don't know. Did you do that? Do you even get stats in high school? No, yeah, we, we like did. Um, thing? my senior year, I was like around like uh, two ninety ish. Um, so nothing, nothing fantastic. It's high school ball. <laughs> no context whether that's a, or bad. It's above zero. So yeah, right. So that that's would be like every two point nine times I, out of ten, I got a hit or something like that. Yeah. um that's what that would mean 290 you said yeah so 0. Yeah. 0.29 is the technically what it is but no right. one ever uses decimals oh uh, lp if um if i tell you my betting average in cricket is say 40 would you be able to tell me what that means no okay. <laughs> <laughs> like if that'd be 40 no it wouldn't be 40 runs that'd be a ton uh yeah yeah it's uh it's, it's just really like right. it's, it's like total career runs divided by how many times you've been out basically okay so, so this kind of, is that so and tom's is closer hour. to five not 40 just so you know <laughs> <laughs> i i think in high school i i don't know i averaged like 28 or something so nothing spectacular i have no idea what, what a good benchmark is <laughs> it, um, for, for high, high school it's like you know it's a at most 30 game season uh so so it's a real small sample size so um like uh over like a MLB season of 162 games, like the, the best hitters again, they're also facing off against the best pitchers. They're going to be somewhere above 300. So over three times out of 10, they're getting hits, um, which is very difficult to do in high school. You know, you could face a few bad schools and pad the stats, the variability and talents, obviously way bigger than in the MLB, but yeah. All right, we're, we're getting well, off the rails. <laughs> yeah, lizard person, why don't you take us out with your uh, calling card, incredible outro? Incredible? Incredible. Um, yeah, let me hold on a second. Um, Let's get Mark back on there. Please. We hope you've enjoyed this episode <laughs> of Punch Card Investing. <laughs> we had a great time. Mark didn't have as great of a time. We didn't pick his stock. We could have. We voted. And it didn't get added to the portfolio. Not that it might and it might get added in the future. We'll see. We appreciate you all for staying with us for this whole episode. And we'd also appreciate it if you smash the like button and subscribe while you're at it. And ideally Mark, you could check Mark, out the Mark, Mark, the Mark. Discord group and all the great things in the description below. You know, we haven't plugged Karan's shop in a while where he, he sells punch card merch. I'm sure he's coming out with the smoke and mates. Sure, <laughs> a smoke and meat mug or shirt that would be great can but you pull we, that up jack pull up that shop let's check it out i i can't there's marks in the <laughs> way sorry <laughs> but, but please go check that out 
<laughs> um, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Till next time.